Hello, I am so glad that you have chosen to join us for this webinar that addresses the high quality component of family engagement. My name is Tamala Olsby and I am a member of the Early Childhood Education Division here at TEA. This slide describes what we will uh, discuss today in our webinar. We will first do an overview of the high quality pre-kindergarten components that are referenced in HB3. We will spend most of our time talking about the component of family engagement. We will discuss how to write a family engagement plan. We will um, discuss how to reach for even higher levels of quality and we will end our time together discussing resources and support. So let's briefly look at those high quality components that are referenced in HB3. Texas has been on a journey for quite some time now to increase the quality of its public pre-kindergarten program. And the link between positive child outcomes and the quality level of the pre-kindergarten program is a very well-researched subject. Let's look at this quote. Not all pre-kindergarten programs successfully support early learning. It is decidedly not the case that just any pre-K program operating just under any circumstances will provide young children with the inputs they need to produce, let alone sustain early developmental gains. So that is what we are striving for. We want our youngest students in Texas to attend a high quality pre-kindergarten program. These are the high quality pre-kindergarten components that are referenced in HB3 and are a requirement of every public pre-K program within Texas that is serving eligible four-year-old students. They are curriculum, student progress monitoring, teacher qualifications, teacher-student ratio, family engagement, program evaluation, and data reporting. And the focus of this particular webinar is on family engagement. All of the information contained within this presentation comes from at least one of the three sources listed on this slide. So here we go. What are the requirements that focus on the development and implementation of an LEA's family engagement plan? But before we look at those requirements, I believe we should ask, why are we even looking at family engagement? Is it really a component of high quality? Let's look at this research here. The most accurate predictors of student achievement in school are not family income or so social status, but the extent to which the family creates a home environment that encourages learning, communicates high yet reasonable expectations for a child's achievement, and becomes involved in the child's education at school. The most highly regarded high quality pre-kindergarten programs within our country have all had effective family engagement. It is good for us to be reminded that parents are a child's first teacher. Young students benefit greatly from attending a district or a charter that prioritizes family engagement. This slide articulates what is in statute regarding family engagement for pre-kindergarten um, programs serving eligible four-year-olds. It says, a school district shall develop and implement a family engagement plan to assist the district in achieving 
and maintaining high levels of family involvement and positive family attitudes toward education. This slide articulates what is in commissioner's rule regarding family engagement. Um, again, for pre-kindergarten programs serving eligible four-year-old students. It says a school district or an open enrollment charter school shall develop, implement, and make available on the district's charter or campus website a family engagement plan to assist the district in achieving and maintaining high levels of family involvement involvement and positive family attitudes toward education. An effective family engagement plan creates a foundation for the collaboration of mutual partners, embraces the individuality and uniqueness of families, and promotes a culture of learning that is child-centered, age-appropriate, and family-driven. The commissioner's rule also gives definitions for both the terms family and family engagement, and then it lists six strategies or components, actually, that um, must be included in a LEA's family engagement plan. So what does all of that mean? Well, simply, it means LEAs are required to write a family engagement plan, to implement that plan, and to make sure that plan is available on their website. And the goal would be to achieve and maintain high levels of um, family involvement and positive family attitudes toward education. This next slide shows the six components that are uh, contained within the commissioner's rule regarding the family engagement plan. Um, so the first one from the left is facilitate family to family support. Next, establish a network of community resources. Increase family participation in decision making. Equip families with tools to enhance and extend learning. Develop staff skills in evidence-based practices that support families in meeting their children's learning benchmarks. And finally, evaluate family engagement efforts and use evaluations for continuous improvement. So in a nutshell, LEAs must develop and implement a family engagement plan that has these six components in it. And that plan must be on the web. Let's look now at a couple of family uh, frequently asked questions that um, relate to the family engagement plan. The first one says, should the family engagement plan be a district document or can it be relevant to just one campus? Well, the family engagement plan that contains the six components should be associated with a district or a charter's pre overall pre-kindergarten program. A district should have one document that covers the whole district. Campus level modifications within a district may be made to suit the needs of each individual campus. The LEAs will upload their family engagement plan, the link to that family engagement plan, into the Early Childhood Data System, or as we call it, ECDS, annually. And that's why it's important to have one overall plan. Here is another frequently asked question. Our district already has a document that addresses how to encourage family involvement. Can we use that document to comply with this high quality component? And the answer is, well, often um, the scenario that you have presented is accurate. Districts and charters already have some kind of a written plan that describes their approach to working with the families of the students they serve. 
Um, this might be true if a district has Title I funding or is in partnership with a Head Start grantee. So it is possible to use that existing document if it, number one, the existing document has the six expected components. Number two, if the activities listed in the document are implemented in the pre-K program. And number three, if the document is available on the web. All righty. Let's turn our attention now to writing a family engagement plan. What sources of information could an LEA choose to use to assist in writing this plan? Well, let's first discuss the most obvious. It is definitely recommended that districts and charters directly ask families first about the activities and the events that would interest them. Families can offer input um, through surveys or focus groups in a variety of ways. And families are the best source of information for writing a family engagement plan. So don't forget them. Here is a sample outline for a family engagement plan. It begins with an introductory paragraph. Um, and the introductory paragraph should describe the LEA's overall approach to family engagement. And then the next section should list all of the events and practices that are associated with those six components that we just talked about. And then, of course, there is a conclusion. And it is always good to conclude the conclude the document with encouraging words to urge parents to become involved with their children's education. Now, please note, this is a sample outline. The document itself could be arranged in numerous ways as long as those six expected components can be easily identified in the document. We're going to go over now each section of the family engagement plan in a little more detail. So what does the introductory paragraph um, need to contain or what things might you consider writing about? And I've listed several questions here. What place does family engagement plan have in the overall mission or vision of the school? What roles are families encouraged to take on at school? What expectations does the district or charter have for each family? And how are respectful, trusting relationship with families nurtured within the school system? Thinking about these questions will help you in writing that introductory paragraph. <clears throat> the next section of the family engagement plan is that identification of the events, activities, and practices. This will be the largest part of the plan. And so um, we are going to suggest now that you look at, um, first of all, families. Remember, we're going to bug you until we are all asking families about what they would be interested, what events, what activities, what practices would lure them into being more involved in their children's education. So we don't want to lose sight of that. And then besides that, in writing this section, we are going to um, suggest that you use three documents. One would be your school calendar. And you will notice I have written four out of the six components that I believe could be uh, linked to the school calendar. And the school calendar will be a really good resource when writing um, uh, activities and events and all of that for these four um, components. 
The next document would be uh, staff professional development plans. And that document within your district would help you to write the, identify the events and activities and practices for this, um, the component of developing staff skills. And then lastly, the last um, document would be any planning or continuous improvement documents. And they would help with this sixth and final component. So let's start first with using your school calendar. So first of all, you're going to ask families. And then you're going to look at your existing school calendar. Both of them are really good resources for four out of the six components. So for component number one, remember, it is how does the district or charter facilitate family to family support? So again, the focus here is on equipping the families to support other families in the pre-kindergarten program. So common activities that might be listed here are things like creating a welcoming environment, having a meet and greet time before the first week of school, inviting former program participants to share with current families, having informal gatherings such as a family fun night, or organizing communication assistance such as translation. So as stated earlier, one of the best sources of listing the events and activities in this component would be, first of all, ask families, and then second of all, to look at your school calendar. So in writing this section of the family engagement plan, one would name the component, write a short description of the component, and then list the activities, events, or practices that the district or charter offers that are associated with this particular component. The next component is establish a network of community resources. Families often have needs, um, and these needs often need assistance. And um, when they are not met, the needs can negatively impact their children. And school districts and charters often are not able to um, meet all those needs that a family might have, but they can collaborate with outside community agencies to bring those services to the families. So what kinds of activities or practices might fit into this component? You might think about creating a, camp, a community resource handbook, or even assisting families in getting a library card would fit in this particular component. Facilitating referrals for needed services, providing written information on available resources in the community, and then perhaps having a different community resource visit the pre-kindergarten periodically. That gives the family the opportunity to interact with the resource in a much more convenient fashion. So again, one of the best resources of, or sources of information for this particular component would first of all be the family, and second of all would be your school calendar. So again, in writing this part of the family engagement plan, you would name the component, write a short description of the component, and then record the activities, events, and practices that the district or charter offers that are associated with this particular component. And then we're at component number three, which is to increase family participation in decision making. Families are empowered when they are active 
in the decisions that affect their child's education. And districts and charters can do this in numerous ways. So some things that you might find um, that could fit into this component may be having a family advisory group or supporting leadership or teaching pa parents how to be their own child's advocate. Presenting opportunities to provide input and feedback on key events. That would be like surveying them. Um, identifying families who could represent pre-K at various overall district functions. And then obviously inviting parents to participate in the development of continuous improvement plans. The best source of information for this component are the families that you are currently serving. But another really good source of um, information might be your school calendar. So again, in writing this section, you would name the component, write a short description of the component, and then list the activities, events, and practices that are associated with this component. Component four, equip families with tools to enhance or extend learning. Children learn best when the things that they are studying at school are also supported at home. For example, when a parent or a guardian reads to their children on a regular basis, children acquire the skills to read in a quicker fashion. And families often want to help, but they don't know how. And so this is an area where an effective LEA can make a real difference, not only in the student's life, but in the life of the family. Items to consider in this category include providing families with information related to age-appropriate developmental expectations. So perhaps a class on what is a four-year-old like? Um, equipping families with resources and skills to how to create their own family learning environment. Obviously, we want to always encourage families to participate in the classroom, and we might help promote the use of some family-friendly technology that could be used in the home. And we always want to give some workshops to family members that are focused on early childhood topics. So the best source of information on this particular component, again, is the family that you are serving. And then ask them what they wanna learn about. And then after that, look at your current school calendar. I think you'd be surprised at how many events and activities you already have that fall into this component. So again, in writing this section of the family engagement plan, you would name the component write a short description of the component, and then record or list the activities, events, and practices that you are offering um, that are associated with this component. So that took care of four out of the six components, just by asking families and using your school calendar. So let's turn our attention now to component number five. And in component number five, we want you again to ask families, but then we want you to use your staff professional development plans. So component number five says, developing staff skills in evidence-based practices that support families in meeting their children's learning benchmarks. So this is really focused on how well prepared the teacher is to support the families. Um, and it is um, recommended that school districts and charters include family engagement topics as part of a teacher's annual professional development activities. 
this um, slide now will show you a myriad of topics that could be used in a professional development activity with teachers um, to assist them in how they interact with families. And all of these would be um, much needed um, in a teacher's toolbox. Again, the best source of information about this particular component is not only the families, but looking at those existing um, professional development plans. So again, in writing this section, you'd name the component, write a short description of the component, and then list or record the activities, events, or practices that fall under this component. For the last component of the family engagement plan, it is really recommended that you use your current families um, as a resource. Um, and you may have continuous improvement documents that could also support this last final component. So component number six says, evaluate family engagement efforts and use evaluations for continuous improvement. So like many other facets of education, it is important to always be in a system evaluation um, to evaluate your current practices for their effectiveness. Um, and this component especially would benefit from having input from existing school families. Items that would fit into this um, component include doing goal setting, um, using surveys to um, ascertain how effective the events and the practices that you are implementing are and really engaging the family. Um, how do you put family engagement into the district's already existing improvement plans? And then there are numerous research-based tools that you might want to check out to assess how effective your family engagement is within your district. Um, so again, in writing this section, you would name the component, write a short description of the component, and then record the activities, events, and practices that are associated with it. So we have gone through all six components. Four of them were attached to get your information from families in the school calendar. One was ask families and use staff de professional development plans. And this final one was ask families again and then use your current continuous improvement documents to do um, to write that. And this is obviously the largest section of the plan. And then finally, you want to have a concluding paragraph. And things that you might consider for that is to, again, review the priority that family engagement has in the overall mission or vision of your district or charter, review the expectations that the district or charter has for each family, emphasize the role of the collaborative nature between schools and families that lead to positive child outcomes, and then a word of encouragement to families to be involved. Um, is always good to have in a, in a concluding paragraph. So let's say your district already has a family engagement plan. How could you reach for even higher quality? Let's remember our goal, positive child outcomes. Engaging families in their children's education can have lasting very positive effects, and it is definitely a sign of a high-quality pre-kindergarten program that they have strong, effective family engagement. So if you're looking for how do we reach even higher, here are some items that you might want to consider. What 
kinds of communication do you use to communicate to families? And you'll notice I say on a weekly basis. And you'll notice it's written there multiple modes. Do you only use written? Do you only use technology? Do you ever use the phone? Um, using multiple modes is a very effective way to get um, high family involvement. So you might want to consider that. Can all families, regardless of their language or their ability, participate in all school activities? And do they? So if you're noticing um, a difficulty with um, participation, you might want to consider um, the uh, consider multiple things, but language and a family's ability might be um, two of the reasons that are um, hindering their participation. Are families receiving written materials from school in a inclusive, culturally, and linguistically appropriate manner? And then finally, does the LEA provide sources of assistance? Um, remember, we talked about that in um, the community resource section. And how could that be improved? Because families nowadays often need a lot of help, a lot of assistance, and a school is a good way to deliver that assistance. And although the high quality components <clears throat> that are referenced in HB3 are directed at eligible four-year-olds, we don't want to forget those little three-year-olds. And remember, it is best practice that pre-kindergarten programs serving eligible three-year-olds also adhere to the high quality components, especially in family engagement. And don't forget, your early education allotment can be used to increase the quality of those programs that are serving eligible three-year-olds. Let's now look at some resources and support that may assist you in complying with this high quality component. I've listed the early childhood program self-assessments. There is a whole section in that document on family engagement. I have listed um, a document from the Office of Head Start um, that is a really good document on professional development for staff that work with families. And then this um, last document is from the PTA, the Parent Teacher Association, and it has a lot of good information about strong family engagement and how to get there. We've also created a high quality checklist that could be used to document areas of strength or proficiency and areas that you need to grow in. And the items listed here are both in statute or they might be in commissioner's list or the commissioner's rule, excuse me, and they may just be things that would encourage you to even higher levels of quality. The Early Childhood Division here at TEA is ready and very willing to support your efforts in family engagement. So please feel free to visit our website and email us, contact us when you need additional guidance. We are here to support you. And I'd like to leave you today with a, a good quote on family engagement. And here it is. Parent involvement in education is like the frosting on a cupcake. It makes it complete and oh, so sweet. I think we could all say amen to that. Thank you for joining me today for this important topic um, concerning family engagement in your district and charter. And don't hesitate to contact us if you need further guidance. Thank you.